Hey folks, today I'm going to be diving a little bit into DaVinci Resolve Fusion. I'm going to be taking a clip and replacing the background or altering the background to make it fit better with the story. So let's dive straight in and see what I'm talking about. You can see in this original clip here, um, we've got some cars driving around in the background. And at this point in the story, this is a clip from my short film Bombs Away that you can watch here on YouTube. Uh, at this point in the story, this character is, uh, you know, all alone in a parking lot and, uh, you know, the, the world's about to end and there's this, you know, siren going on. And so it's really weird for there to be like traffic going on in the background. Uh, there was this really cool snowstorm. We were out filming. It's the perfect shot, except for obviously the uh, cars driving around in the background. So we're going to be getting rid of those and we're going to go from that to this where there's no cars driving around in the background. So I'll jump into a blank timeline and start from the very beginning. I'll drag my uh, original clip in and we can watch it through. Yep, there I am trying to get into the building. Not working, cars are driving behind me. So let's select the clip, jump into Fusion, and we'll see that the same thing is indeed here in Fusion. So this clip was shot in Canon Log 2, and you know that gives you a lot of dynamic range, but then when you're working in visual effects and all of that, like it's uh, still gonna be gray and look bad, and you can't really tell what's going on. Um, and so I'm including this part of the video. It's not strictly related to the background replacement, but it's something that I wasn't super sure about, and so I looked into how to deal with like color management or you know how to properly do visual effects with log footage, and uh, this is something that I thought was pretty cool, so I'm gonna show you uh, how to do it. So um, we're actually going to jump into the color page and make a viewing LUT in the color page. As you might know, um, anything you do in the uh, color page uh, isn't necessarily reflected in Fusion, so you see I just raised the exposure there, jump back into Fusion and it's uh, still dark, but that's okay. We're gonna make a viewer let and uh, this workflow this left to right you know visual effects then color um, that is reflective of how you want to be working right you want to be leaving your color for after you've done your visual effects so you can make sure that it you know all matches in but you do want some sort of temporary way of seeing you know close to a finished look or at least some sort of like rec 7 rec 709 look uh, and this is how to do it so we're gonna be uh, you know raise the exposure a bit let's add a color space transform to it Input is Canon Cinema Gamut. Canon Log 2. Output Rec 709. Um, I'm going to bring the lift down a little bit. And of course, like I said before, this doesn't need to be perfect. This just needs to be a little bit better than just looking at log. So here you go. This is good enough for now. Um, we're going to right click on the clip here, go to Generate LUT. 65 point cube, save it. I'm gonna call this uh, viewer VFX shot 001. I don't know, you're gonna want some sort of naming scheme for your project, but whatever, let's just call it whatever for now. So let's jump back into Fusion and go up to this icon here. This is where you can load in LUTs, as you can see. Drop down arrow right next to it, edit, browse, find the thing that you just did, I think I called it, yeah, this is the right one. And voila. This is just a way of uh, viewing it in the Fusion page specifically, so you can disable it and enable it at any point, with this icon here. Uh, this is just a good way of seeing what you're doing rather than working in log space or seeing it in log space. You still are working in log space, which is great. Retain all that dynamic range. Um, another way you could do this is with color space transform nodes here in the Fusion page. Uh, this is just gonna make it a little bit less complicated. So uh, let's label our nodes here just so we can stay organized. So the big trick at play here is that we're going to be masking our subject out and placing it onto a background plate that we filmed on the same day when there isn't cars moving in the background. But uh, this is basically how I did it for the final film. And it's uh, not that not that not that bad. Um, rotoscoping sounds difficult, but uh, luckily there is this magic mask. So I uh, just did shift spacebar to bring up the select tool dialog. I'm adding that. I'm going to drag it in here between our subject and our media output. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the subject, 
that I want to rotoscope with the paintbrush here. And look at that. And now I'm going to let Magic Mask do its work. And I will track, reverse, back to the start. So this does take a while, going frame by frame, but it is a lot better than you doing it frame by frame, right? And so I uh, just watch it, babysit it a little bit, uh, make sure it's not going off. Uh, if it does go off, you can stop it, say yes, and then make your adjustments by adding or subtracting to the selection, as the case may be, then you can resume tracking. Okay, and so I noticed that there's a problem here. I put my hand in my pocket, but it's not reflected in the mask, so I'm going to go to the first problem frame, make sure that the selection is good here. Looks good, and continue tracking reverse. So we've got all of this masked. We'll go back to our first frame here that we uh, selected and track forward from here. Watching for any issues, just like before. I know at one point the car comes out from behind me. Oh, there it is. So zoom in, scroll wheel plus command. I'm going to be removing that bit, make sure that we're still marked. Drag forward a frame. There's a little bit of the car through there, but we still like that. Drag forward a frame. Okay, I think we are good to continue on. And you can see that it's not necessarily looking great up here by my face. Uh, that's okay. If you need perfect roto for your shot in certain places, uh, maybe Magic Mask isn't the right tool. Uh, but I'll show why it's okay that it's not a perfect roto uh, for this particular shot. We actually don't even really need my face uh, rotoed at all for this shot because all of the problematic car movement is happening kind of in this area, like below my eyes and hair. That's helpful for this shot. All right, so tracking has completed. We've got our rotoed shot. You know, it's uh, Magic Mask did a pretty good job. That would have taken forever if you did it by hand. So we've got our rotoscope footage, and now let's bring in our background plate that we shot. So let's just uh, take a look at what this is in our, in our viewer. And I'm pressing uh, one and two to load this into the the single viewer. I've got single viewer mode enabled. Um, and so this is this is the background plate. It's just about 58 frames of you know snow falling in the empty parking lot with uh, no uh, movement behind. And uh, it's only 58 frames long. Once we get to frame 59, it goes blank for the rest of the 312 frame composition here. And that's uh, just because this, this clip is only 58 frames long. I'm gonna rename it here to BG. But we can uh, make it, we can extend it to the end of the uh, whole composition just by pressing loop here. And we can press play. You can see that it just keeps looping. I don't see the loop point. It's uh, got the nice motion of the snow. Uh, perfect, perfect for us. You know, one way of doing this effect could be that you just have a still frame of the blank background and, uh, you know, rotoscope your footage over that. It's nice to have this kind of movement in there, though, especially because it's in the middle of the snowstorm. You get all the snowflakes going. Uh, so that's why I'm going this round. So let's start adding these two things together. I'm going to put the background into the background node, the subject out the the output of the magic mask into the foreground here of the merge node. Let's uh disconnect that and then connect the output of the merge into our media out. And look at that. I have been added in over the uh background footage and um, so this is the basic principle here, but, uh, like I said earlier, the magic mask for as good as it is, is it's, it's not a perfect rotoscope. Um, it does a pretty good job, but it's not perfect. But the good thing is, is that the problematic bits of our original footage, uh, all kind of take place in this one kind of region of the, of the composition. It's kind of this middle composition here. So... Uh, we don't need the roto to be perfect everywhere. We only need it to work in this like limited stripe here. And the good thing is that it worked out for this clip is that um, 
the roto doesn't need to be perfect uh, around my face and hair and glasses. Uh, for that, we can just comp back in the original footage because there's not a car coming out of my head. That works out well for us. So I'm just going to copy and paste the uh, subject footage in again. I'm going to drag this over the output there to automatically make a merge node. And then I'm going to get a poly line out here. And I'm just going to mask out the problematic areas of the original footage. So again, we're watching through this. We can see that the cars pass through um, left to right here. There's a problem back here. There's a problem here. And uh, yeah, you can see there's a you know car through there. So let's draw our polygon. Here. So if we watch it back and forth. Does all the movement take place in this region? Cool. So let's actually connect that polyline into our subject. Uh, we're going to want to invert that mask, soften the edges a bit so we can blend it together. And then when we view these together, we can see that um, we actually have this looping background of no cars uh, replacing where the you know the cars the cars are so um, we're all, we are right on the right track obviously as you can see here uh, the focus isn't quite the same it's kind of, kind of has a weird like tilt shift effect or like a weird split diopter or something I don't know kind of looks cool but it's not the effect that we're going for but luckily we can just drag a blur node between our background node and uh, the first merge node, merge node, not merge mode. Um, look out, y'all! I'm going merge mode. We're gonna keyframe the blur over time. So let's find, let's just drag up the blur until it looks about right. I'm kind of looking in this region. We've got detail on the the parked cars and the building there. Then I'm just kind of trying to make it look like uh, they go together. Keyframe, and I'm jumping around 20 frames at a time making sure it still looks good as I'm when I'm closer to the camera that's when it's gonna look blurrier kind of automating a rack focus here autofocus is no replacement for a focus puller shout out to all the second ACs out there I'm adding these keyframes every 20 frames even though it still looks good because once I once it does eventually start changing, like I don't want it to slowly drift over those like hundred frames where it was the same, you know, I want it to be in line with what the actual camera is doing. So we're basically done with this, but I'm going to add one last ingredient to all this. If you zoom in real close, you can tell that there's a, uh, you know, a difference between the look of the comped background and the original plate and it's a it's good it's, it looks a little bit noisy and then if you look here you can see that original roto not looking the best so let's 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 address those so let's copy our original footage in again merge it over let's get a um, polyline out and what we're gonna do is let's address this sort of harsh corner first So we're just going to comp my my head in again, um, and it, it's really just kind of like a stripe of my head, but we just want to, you know, make sure that we don't have too bad of a, a harsh, harsh line from the magic mask again. So we're going to kind of do what we did before with the blur, and we're just going to go through the footage. This, th this doesn't need to be very exact. The only times where it needs to be exact are when the actual car is, uh, like, passing like through this area. Okay, cool. So let's now address the, um, the difference in noise level, right? We've got, there was an example. Yeah. Okay. So you can see here, this is, uh, the original footage and this is the comped background plate. Comped background plate looks too clean. So Let's do it after the blur node. Let's add shift space, search for grain, and drag it between there. 
Obviously not that much. It looks about right. Um, and we need to add some chroma to it. Now we have our final shot. So let's just walk through what we're, what we're doing with the nodes here from start to finish. We started here with our subject node, the original, and then we masked it out to isolate the subject. And then we merged it over our background node. And then we started adding in um, the original footage again, the, uh, the subject plate in the, in, in the spots where uh, the cars weren't. So we could still use as much of the original footage as we could. And then we added, you know, my head in, in into it. And that's just to sort of dip down below the, uh, th this bar here where my face was. And we merged it all together. We added some blur to the original footage to match the camera focusing as I was walking closer and farther from the camera. Add a little bit of grain to match the original footage. Put it all together, and we've got our final shot. And then again, this is all in uh, the log space, so we didn't, we haven't done anything destructive to our color space with this. We head back to the edit page and see that it is all contained in this fusion composition. So that's how you uh, fix a background if what you've got is uh, exactly what I had in this situation. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.